Chapter on the saying of one man to another, Ikhsa. Footnote. Ikhsa is originally used as a word of rebuke said to a dog to dismiss something. It is also used to rebuke a person who says or does something improper by which he may incur Allah's wrath. It means stop talking and go away with shame and humiliation. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to Ibn Sa'id, I have hidden something for you in my mind. What is it? He said, Ad-Dukh. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ikhsa, you should be ashamed. Footnote. Ibn Sa'id, who was said to be a soothsayer, guessed part of the word which the Prophet, peace be upon him, had in mind. He said, Ad-Dukh, while it was ad dukhan that is, smoke. Narrated Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them. Umar ibn al-Khattab set out with Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and a group of his companions to Ibn Sayyad. They found him playing with the boys in the fort or near the hillocks of Bani Maghala. Ibn Sayyad was nearing his puberty at that time, and he did not notice the arrival of the Prophet, peace be upon him, till Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, stroked him on the back with his hand and said, Do you testify that I am Allah's Messenger? Ibn Sayyad looked at him and said, I testify that you are the messenger of the unlettered ones, illiterates. Then Ibn Sayyad said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Do you testify that I am Allah's messenger? The Prophet, peace be upon him, denied that saying, I believe in Allah and all his messengers, and then said to Ibn Sayyad, What do you see? Ibn Sayyad said, True people and liars visit me. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, You have been confused as to this matter. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, added, I have kept something for you in my mind. Ibn Sayyad said, Ad-Dukh. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Ikhsa, you should be ashamed, for you cannot cross your limits. Umar said, O Allah's Messenger, allow me to chop off his neck. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to Umar, Should this person be him, that is, Ad-Dajjal, then you cannot overpower him, and should he be someone else, then it will be no use your killing him. Footnote 1. The unlettered ones means the Arabs. Footnote 2. See Volume 5, Hadith number 4402, and Volume 4, Hadith number 6450. Abdullah ibn Umar added, Later on, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and Ubay ibn Ka'b al-Ansari, once again, went to the garden in which Ibn Sayyad was present. When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, entered the garden, he started hiding behind the trunks of the date palms, intending to hear something from Ibn Sayyad before the latter could see him. Ibn Sayyad was lying on his bed, covering with a velvet sheet from where his murmur were heard. Ibn Sayyad's mother saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Saf, the nickname of Ibn Sayyad, here is Muhammad. Ibn Sayyad stopped his murmuring. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If his mother had kept quiet, then I would have learnt more about him. Abdullah added, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, stood up before the people, delivering a khutbah, religious talk, and after praising and glorifying Allah as he deserved, He mentioned at Dajjal, saying, I warn you against him, and there has been no prophet but warned his followers against him. Nuh, Noah, warned his followers against him. But I am telling you about him something which no prophet has told his people of, and that is, know that he is blind in one eye, whereas Allah is not so.